some of these guys sitting right here 40 years from now are going to be, are going to be somebody like you. Some of it's going to be honored, some of it's going to be what we're talking about. I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in the moment that we lose sight of that. But what we're doing is going to, going to touch a lot of people. I know you guys didn't come to hear me talk. I talk all the time. So I'm going to turn it over, first of all, to uh, Greg Huff. we like Greg introduce one of our guests and then see if maybe they want to have a word. Okay, this gentleman went to Lebanon High School, still lives in London. He graduated from London in 41, went on to Ohio State. He was an All-American and graduated in 47 at Ohio State. Uh, Dr. Hackett. All right. Thank you very much. 
that I was coaching, Von Cannell, of course, was the main guy. I just happened to be the guy that would patch on his shoulder uh, when things were going tough. And the head coach gave you hell. And I, excuse me, this is not <laughs> uh, uh, You know, somebody always has to be your, your, your companion. So they help me out with them. They go off in that coach. I never yelled. <laughs> uh, I, I used to yell, especially when you were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> he was president of his class, so you know. <laughs> but here was his 1933 young people team. And, and, uh, this is the history of the games that were played from 19... 29, which I came to 29, Mr. Blanchard, together. And 
came in 190 pounds. And here I was just 135 pounds, but I had enough guts to line up and catch. And he'd have them kick off from me, and I'd have to run. And I knew one thing that I'd make believe I was going to the left, and then I'd run away from the guys. And then you know how it is, King. You, you run away from the guys, don't you? <laughs> about, instead of trying to run over them all the time. Anyway, uh, in this book, uh, that's the history of, of, of those years. And uh, I'll show you something very important. And there's a way back to 1907, uh, we have an undefeated team in the picture of that is in here. And uh, we also have a picture of Mr. Von Campbell. You've seen this picture there. He played fullback down there in Wilmington, and he could throw a forward pass from the 50-yard line by right over the goal line. He got over there now. And, uh, I've got another picture here. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think more things for all of this. Yeah. I have to do all the time. There's a picture of, of Mr. Hackett when he was uh, just, just graduated from high school and he was in all America by the time. Jack Cobley used to be the commentator uh, here in the radio, and he's the one that compiled this. Now you talk about. Uh, uh, West Jefferson. Well, the, the whole story about that West Jefferson thing is we played him for about 15 years and they never beat London. They have one tie. But they, they dropped us off of the schedule. Uh, Satch Davidson was the last one who played on that team and he had a hot room and later he became an uh, uh, umpire in the big leagues. And uh, in fact, this, this picture was in uh, the Life magazine. And he was, in the, and he was behind the plate the time that, that Hank Aaron had broken Jay Root uh, record. But uh, he couldn't do anything else but to kick, kick off. And that he couldn't. That year we would have, uh, we would have had an undefeated team if he didn't have to play. But he later goes on now and he, he came up to the hospital to see me here while I was in love with him. And I was surprised to see all that. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the, the experiences that you have with meeting people like, you know, like the coach here and, and Bill. Um, they come up and tap me on the show. But I always wanted to be a coach. And I worked for an envelope company. And uh, I found out that I wasn't in the right spot, so I changed him out here. <coughs> and I came out, I trained back in those days, Pullman. And uh, they took the shoes. I thought my shoes were stolen. But they took them in the shiner. That was way back 61 years ago. And you, you fellas haven't had the opportunity of, of riding in, in, in a Pullman train. Uh, it's something that uh, too bad we don't have more of it. And, uh, but London uh, has always been a football player. Way back, and we even have a baseball player here by the name of Bob Vesher. Uh, he played for the New York Giants, and uh, he held the, the record for stolen bases for many years until just recently. Uh, and also, believe it or not, they used to play the games down back at the Waterworks. And they, they had a team up here, the Hustonians, where Allerton Farm is. They used to have a baseball team. New York Giants. Muggsy McGraw was the coach, manager, 
and that team came here and played the London team. So that's how much London has always been in sports. And, and how I can go on and reminisce because since these two boys, gentlemen, are here, I, I don't dare try and brag of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead, uh, brag about it. <laughs> well, I can just tell you what I remember this guy in high school, and uh, he was trying to trying to date this one particular girl. You know, and, uh, his name was Howard, and he was the coach down in the in the where your coach today is. You know, uh, yeah. No, way down. Down the way, you played baseball against London in the tournament, didn't you? You, you, you were the pitcher, mm -hmm. the guy was at Lakewood, and uh, his father owned the press here. Who was Howard? Howard. 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 Howard.
assistant football coach at Audubon for about 15 years and after playing there. And so I have a very close kinship with uh, football and having played it through high school and played through college and then coached at Audubon. And very close to baseball and track also. So I've been in the game of that place. But I think the purpose of the talk here is not necessarily to talk about me, but talk about just briefly for you guys uh, as the question that Dobby asked uh, uh, Dr. Habit, uh, Dr. Hackett, as to what uh, London meant to him. Uh, if I can say anything to you guys, uh, you ought to listen. You ought to listen. You know, we still cut our hair, and we don't wear your rings. And the hair is no longer in the lobe of the ear, it's not turned up on the back of the neck, and no lower than the eyebrows. The mustache is evenly trimmed, no lower than the corner of the mouth, and no goatees. Your hats are on straight, your pants are pulled up, you shave every day, you go to class because that's the way I was taught in high school. And what I'm here to say to you is that I'm not here to impose on you the styles of today as far as what people accept and don't accept, but I'm here to tell you that there are many wrong things. And one of the right things is some of the things that coach is trying to do for you is to bring back not necessarily me because the uh, Lord knows that I make enough mistakes in my life, but to bring back history. Because there's one thing you ain't going better not to do. You better never do. I came from 163 Elm Street. I was born in a house, a double house on 163 Elm Street, and three brothers had a mother, and I used to skip to keep up with my mother. When she walked to work up at the corner, here, when there was a dry place in the 5 and 10 cent store. And I used to walk to school every day from Elm Street. That's where I was born, that's where I was raised, and that's where I developed everything. And people, these people here helped mold me as to what I think I am. So if I had any measure of success, if you want to measure success, is a measure of accept, if success my championships rings in the NCAA? Is my trips to the Final Four, not in London, Ohio, but not in the state of Ohio, not in the Northeast, but in the country? Is your measure of my success because I've been to the Final Four twice, I've been to the Final Eight three times, I've won championships? No, that's not the measure. The measure is Mo Wilson, Danny Polly, Herschel Birds that I know and very close to, and I Carol Simmons, and on the other side of town, Will Pratt, and Tingley's, the Bows. It's all the people that I knew from London because when you don't understand yet and you don't like to hear too much from older people, you don't understand yet what it means when you leave this town and you drive back into the town and you come down the same streets to where you can see the faces of the people that you were close to when you walk out, and I walk, I, I pulled in here, and the first thought came to my mind is when I came out of a, a basketball practice in uh, February one day, it was a clear day toward tournament time, and walked down the girl that I happened to be going with at that time, the name of Sandy Fowler, was standing on this corner right down here in 1960, looking for my high Y pin that she lost. You never forget. You never forget. And I'm telling you, there's things that are going on in your life. Uh, walking down the street with my wife, we walk about two to two and a half miles every night. I was walking down the street the other night, and the leaves are starting to fall. And you know what flies through my mind is playing today? Walking down Elm Street in front of Carter's house with a brick brick wall there, of scraping my feet through the leaves. And the smell of Friday night leaves burning and football in the lights. The smell of it. It's the history. My purpose of coming back here to talk to you would be to say to you, I don't care what success you have, whether it's monetary success, I don't care if it's newspaper success, I don't care what it is, don't ever forget where you came from. And every chance you get to sit down and talk to your uncles, and every chance you get to sit down at a family reunion, do it. And listen, I got a guy that's about 93 by the name of Tilly Franklin that comes to all my basketball games at Audubon. He sits right up in the corner. He comes to my office before the games and he sits down and he starts talking about things back, back in 1908, 9, 10. And I was fascinated. It was fascinating. All of a sudden now, I find myself driving back into London and thinking about 
Mrs. Peters and our classmates and all the things we did, the fun we had, and it's vivid. It's vivid. This is a 17, 18 year old person looking out of this 49 year old box. You don't understand that. You don't understand that. Until you look in the mirror. So my, my, my comments to you are, soak it up. Soak it up. Because I tell you, Jim Bowles always preached family and always preached fourth quarter, always preached when it's down to the nitty gritty, are you going to give your part? And he had it so that you just damn didn't not give it. <clears throat> because I knew Tom Cummins was on the line doing all he can do. And we beat Hilliards my senior year, six to zip with Dick Hunter's 80 yard run, vivid, hear the crowd, see the lights. And one big, get all your game films in your high school career and transform it on the VCR. I did it about five years ago, came back and got all the films I could get through high school and college and gave it to my brothers for Christmas present. And they have all their high school films as much as we could find on film. Do it, don't forget it. Because the older you get, the more you want. First and 10 on our 20 yard line. First down. 32 trap, same as both of us, it all was us pull back off it. And we said, okay, everybody do the run. Hunter went 80 yards. And we beat him six zip. And Hillary was our big rivalry at that time. So what I'm telling you is give and listen. Because when it comes down to the bottom line, I don't care where it's my family, my wife and I working together, I don't care if it's my basketball team, I don't care what it is, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, the question is going to be, is everybody going to give of everything that they can to be successful? And I don't care whether it's going around the house as I've done, but mom would say, boys, there's another penny around this house somewhere, and where it was 19 cents a vote, dude, there's another penny around here somewhere where it's all four of us running around trying to find that penny. But whether it's more than one, more than one. It's all relative. All relative. Because all the things that you preach about education, which you need, a good boy, you need that. But all the things you preach about and so forth, it always boils down to one thing. Win. Win. The objects to win. Don't let anybody kid you. The objects to win. And the only way to do that is for everybody to give a good part. And so listen to the historians, listen to the school, listen to your parents, listen to your aunts and uncles, because in a few short years, you will be the one that will be reminiscing and talking. And I guarantee you it will happen like that. Like that. I'll be 50 in December, and I swear I could play tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so my comments to you are, enjoy it. Don't ever forget where you came from. Enjoy the moment, but give. Organize what you're going to do, and folks, damn, make good decisions. Make good decisions. Don't let the riffraff of the world force you to make a bad decision. Because how happy you will be will depend upon how many good decisions you make and how many bad decisions you make. If you make more bad than you do good, you have a terrible life. And don't make the one real bad to where it's going to cost you. And you know when that is confronted with you. Otherwise, enjoy it. It's a great time in your life. Thanks. situations to where I don't think that there would be very many people in this day and age 
that would do it. I had two people that quit this year, my basketball team, and we haven't even started, that are a ones a sophomore was in junior, because they didn't think they were going to play. And if I have to sit the bench, I'm not sure I want to play. And I said, well, if you're not sure, let me help you. Don't come out. My brother Gary was a senior at Audubon College. We both lettered in football, basketball, and track. In the first in freshman year, sophomore year, junior year. He was a sprinter, high jumper, long jumper, probably one of the best athletes ever to leave Audubon, and obviously went out of London. He had played halfback in football. We started defensive safety in, in my first two years together. In his junior year, he went to wide out, and I played defensive safety. His senior year, he went to running back, and I played defensive safety and wide out. We played basketball together for three years as starting guards. My junior year, his senior year, a new coach, new coach came in. Gary didn't fit in the plans. And Gary did not ever bitch or moan or complain about playing time or come to late to practice or detract from his effectiveness. He continued to give. All the years in the, through the late 50s and early 60s, we had lost in basketball at Audubon. That year we were 16 and 5. And he made a couple clutch plays late in the game when coach put him in to help us have the season. My first year at Audubon, I'm 27 years of age as head coach. And I don't think I know it all, but I act like I do. I got four sophomores and a senior playing. And we go 19 and 6 in our first year. And one of the big reasons we went in 19 and 6 was because of the leadership that Coach Dottenmeyer gave. And that's not because he's here. He was a very good football player. He was a very good baseball player. In basketball, I had better people. He was a 3-4 star in high school. See, it's hard for you people to, to recognize he's better than you. It's hard for you to have the realization somebody's better than you. Or there's people that are better than me. I don't back down from it, but in some cases you find out they are better. That's a realization of life. He never complained at all. The leadership he gave me on the bench helped us be 196 my first year and win the first, first championship in basketball out of Bain, in Bottlebine's history. And since then, we've been winning. Never complained. I didn't set, I didn't set you up. <laughs> I'm, just trying, I'm, just, I'm trying to share with some of these guys who aren't playing and those you can also serve if you're not on the field. It's important. You're gonna be part of a team. And I'm I'm uh, I'm real moved to be here guys the first induction uh, first class I guess you would say is gonna be every year. I'm really appreciative that you guys have come here with us tonight. And uh, happy for you that you're you are the first class. And I know that uh, these guys, maybe even right now, you know, they want to get home and watch the debates or whatever they want to do. <laughs> they don't understand the importance of what they do. As time passes, I'm sure. So, uh, this, is a, this is a great group, Mr. Harvey. This, this is the nicest, the nicest group of boys that I've ever coached. And I think that, that I'm probably more proud of that than anything. I mean, they're, they're good students. I mean, they're, they're, good, they're good citizens. Right? And you know this, Coach, that's something I learned a long time ago from, from you and Coach Tom and everybody over there that you got to be a citizen first. You're a citizen first and everything else takes care of itself. So we're proud of you. We're, uh, we've got a lot of football left ahead of us. You guys know what time tomorrow and everything? Yeah, well, My house at 10 for Donuts. And then 5.30 at uh, Middle School. Before you all leave, why don't you pass it by here? Shake your hand, man. Shake your hand. Maybe another chance. Yes, sir. Uh, if the boys would fold up the chairs and put them next to the wall, that would really help. Oh, so there's a gentleman I'm sure